Hello and welcome to Cat and Raven Designs. I'm Raven and today let's talk business. To give the TLDR out the gate for this video, my answer as to whether or not you should continue to sell on Etsy or start selling on Etsy has to do with how many items you're selling every month, not orders, items. If you sell less than 135 items a month, go ahead and either continue to sell on Etsy or you're welcome to go ahead and get started on Etsy. As you might expect, that could vary depending on your business, so make sure you're keeping on top of your numbers. Now with that being my most basic answer, let's get into the meat, the stats and the numbers as to how I got there. This is likely to be a long video to get into everything here, so <laughs> hang on to that 135 as your magic number. As an introduction, if you're not familiar with me or with my business, hi. <laughs> I'm one of two people who own and operate Cat and Raven Designs. Uh, we are an LGBTQ plus owned and friendly business selling soaps, lip balms, bath bombs, bubble scoops, all that fun stuff. We got started in January 2019. Our website is linked below in the description, catandravendesigns.com if you want to check out any of our things. And there's also links to all of our online presences down in the description as well. We originally started our business on Etsy and we were there for about 16 months. Prior to that, I did run a different business through Etsy for about three years. As a note, I am not an accountant. I am not a trained business professional. This video will be based on readily available numbers and statistics, as well as my own personal experience. This video Video is not sponsored. I will also be assuming that you're operating out of the United States in USD and using the native payment processing and shipping options through the various platforms we're going to be talking about today. To begin, let's talk about how Etsy works as a general overview. As an Etsy seller, you sign up for an account. Etsy hosts your images and products as listings, processes payments on orders, and provides you with discounted shipping through their native shipping system. Of course, all of these things come with fees. Let's look at Etsy's website for a breakdown of their fees. Simple, transparent, and secure. Well, sort of. Secure, yes. Etsy charges 20 cents per listing fee. These renew every four months or every time an item sells until it sells out. So if you have an inventory of 10, you will pay $2 just in listing fees, assuming it sells out within that four month window. More on this later. Then there's a 5% transaction fee. Next up is payment processing, which is 3% of the order total plus 25 cents per order. This isn't too unusual in terms of rates for payment processing across a lot of seller platforms we'll be looking at. So I can't say it's too far off of industry standard. We're not going to go in depth on the 15% offsite ad fees because A, it's buck wild and has been extensively covered by other people, and B, it's a giant variable. The overview is that if you make less than $10,000 in a 12-month period in sales, you can opt out of it. Otherwise, you are required to participate. If you're in that first group, you pay 15% in fees to Etsy for every order that they bring in through offsite advertising. The second group that's required to participate pays 12%. It's variable because who knows really how many orders you're actually going to get from that program. So for now, we're going to move on past that. What Etsy doesn't mention on this particular page is that there is in fact another fee. So much for transparent. Etsy also has a shipping transaction fee. On top of everything else, they also charge you 5% of the shipping cost. You know those costs you're supposed to get discounted? Mm. Now through Etsy's calculated shipping system, your customer pays the normal shipping cost and then you pay the discounted cost. If you're using Etsy, I do recommend using that system. It makes life a lot easier as a seller. As a real world example, here's an order placed with us in ye olde Etsy days, when we were still on Etsy, of one item weighing about eight total ounces for shipping. Our customer paid $4.12 in shipping and our discounted shipping cost is about $3.52. In my experience with our sales on Etsy, we paid that 5% shipping transaction fee on the amount the customer paid, not the amount we paid. So now we're at 21 cents for $4.12 in shipping. Yeah fees with Etsy are real simple. To give us some hard numbers, let's assume you have one product and you have 10 in your inventory of that one product. You're going to be selling that product at $10 each. Now let's assume 10 people place an order with you for one item each and each one of those items weighs about eight ounces once it's been packaged for shipping and that we're going to be shipping with USPS. Our Etsy income would be $100 for the sale plus $41.20 for the shipping that the customer paid, bringing us to $141.20. We'll subtract the $35.60 that we're going to pay for discounted shipping. For those 10 orders, pretty good chance we're going to pay about $5 to $6 for boxes and packing materials, but we're not going to include that in this particular calculation, but just keep that in mind. Next, we need to subtract the 5% transaction fee, which comes out to about $2.06. Now the payment processing fees, so that's 3% of the transaction, so in this case it's going to come out to about $4.24 plus 25 cents per order. In this case for 10 orders, it would be $2.50. So payment processing comes out to about 6.74. 
But wait, there's more. And now we need to do the 5% transaction fee, which is going to be approximately another $7.06 for those 10 orders. And we're still not done, baby, because we can't forget those listing fees. We paid 20 cents to list it initially, and we'll pay that 20 cents again every time it sells until it sells out. So in this case, $2. Bring that total that we'll actually see being deposited to us to 88.14. Clearly, we're also leaving out the cost of creating the item, the cost of packing and boxes and anything else. Whew! Still feeling simple and transparent because I'm sure is not. At the end of the day, we're paying $17.86 in fees, which again is for $100 worth of sales. And though that may not seem like a lot, that adds up really fast, especially as your business continues to grow. If you're a current Etsy seller and you'd like a rough estimate tool to be able to use to get an idea of how much you're actually paying to be on Etsy, I'll include a link in the description box to a Google Sheets document I put together. You can use that to plug your numbers in and get an idea. Again, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be pretty close. For the four months that we were still active, on Etsy in 2020, here's what our numbers look like. Which looking purely at that looks great, right? Awesome. The important thing to note here is that here's what our fee structure looked like. 1,191.88 in four months. $1,200 is nothing to sneeze at, especially if you're a small business. And it's even more frustrating when you're looking at Etsy stats or payment accounts page where it breaks down your fees. When we look at it, it looks like we paid significantly less because they leave out the payment processing and payment transaction fees in those numbers. In our case, they didn't show us over $425 in fees that we paid. No wonder my accounting always looked off. All right, all right, enough doom and gloom. What does all this mean? How can I tell if I should start selling on Etsy or continue to sell on Etsy? Easiest way to answer that all comes back down to that magic number of 135 that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. If you sell 135 individual items on Etsy, you're paying 20 cents in listing fees per item. In one month, that gives you $27 in listing fees alone. That number is a constant that all sellers are going to pay regardless of how many orders they have, how much they charge, or any other variables. Because all other Etsy fees are based on order totals, total orders placed, shipping costs, how much you charge for your items, everything else that's gonna vary from seller to seller. I bring this up because the biggest concern we had early on in deciding between Etsy and our own website was the monthly cost. The big three I looked at for comparison was Shopify, Squarespace, and Wix. Again, not sponsored. Their basic e-commerce plans are 29, 26, and 23 respectively. Keep in mind too, when you're looking at their sites for their monthly cost, quite often what they're showing you is their annual cost divided by 12. Their monthly plans are typically a little bit higher, in this case, these numbers. You can absolutely save money by going with the annual cost. They're definitely lower. Obviously, you just pay more up front. For the sake of this video, we're going to be looking at their month-to-month -month cost, though, and not the annual. I'm also going to be focusing on Shopify because that's the one that we use, so I have the most personal experience with it. The Google Sheet I mentioned earlier in the description has a breakdown for other options as well. Largely, it's going to be a fairly similar process across all those platforms, so just keep that in mind. So how does a selling platform like Shopify work? TLDR? Pretty much like Etsy, but with way less fees. Shopify hosts your images, products, processes your payments, and gives you shipping options. There are, of course, third-party apps you can install with Shopify to change those payment processing and shipping options, but I'll be looking at the native ones built into Shopify. We're also not going to be going into the customization options that are available for you on Shopify that Etsy absolutely does not have. Again, that's a whole nother video. As a recap, Etsy charges all of these fee structures. The Shopify basic plan doesn't charge a separate transaction fee or shipping transaction fees or listing fees but they do charge a monthly fee of $29 for the basic plan. Their payment processing fees are 30 cents per transaction versus Etsy's 25 cents. Processing fees are the same at 3%. So knowing all that about Shopify, what would our personal numbers have looked like during that four month period if we had been on Shopify versus Etsy? You mean we paid 712.85 extra just to be on Etsy? Back to 135 item sales. If you're a current Etsy seller, it is so incredibly important to be on top of your numbers. If you're worried about the monthly cost of moving off of Etsy, it's so important to find out how much you're actually paying to be on Etsy every month. In our case, we were essentially paying $180 extra every month for the convenience of being on Etsy, which honestly is the person who manages our books was <gasps> to realize. If you're a new seller and considering starting on Etsy, that 135 items a month is the easiest way to keep track of when it is no longer reasonable to continue to sell on Etsy and it's time to move to your own website. I definitely understand early on in your business, it may be hard to pay that $29 a month 
And that's fine. Go ahead and start on Etsy. It's just keeping track of when it's no longer worth your time and money. This becomes especially true if you're like us and you're not in a niche market. There's a ton of soap businesses out there. It's a huge competition to try and get people into your store and buying. Honestly, being on Etsy didn't bring us any extra sales. Etsy stats tell us that we brought 52% of our traffic directly to our store and that Etsy search brought only about 3% of our traffic. Etsy marketing and SEO through Google search brought 25% of our traffic. But what were people searching in Google that usually brought them to us? They were searching for us specifically. Well, apparently also lemon poppy seed muffins. But still, Etsy was basically taking credit for people Googling us. And is having people search directly for us in Google and getting routed to Etsy worth $180 a month? No, absolutely not, not for us. Might as well have folks going straight to us instead of having to be routed through Etsy. So as soon as Etsy specific fees start becoming less than the monthly cost of going to another platform, now's the time to move. Hopefully that answers some questions about the business side of deciding where to sell for your products. If you have any more questions about the numbers or the background side of our business in particular, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If your question gets enough likes or it's a common enough question, I'll do another video about it. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I hope you and your business are doing well. Go be awesome. Bye.